Scripps has it in our DNA, quite honestly. Apart from being a 143-year-old company, D.W. Scripps Company has had a full-time political sales office in Washington, D.C. for the last 12 years. We're one of the only, if not the only, broadcast companies that maintains a full-time presence in the market. Uh, and because of that, we have the trust, we have the customer service and the salesmanship within the market to provide this opportunity to some of our uh, broadcast brethren, if you will. Uh, but also, Rob, if you were to look at our footprint of stations, 60 plus broadcast stations throughout the country, many of them, most of them affiliates, it more reflects the battleground states than it does the top 20 DMAs. So we understand the political marketplace from the basis of where we do our business and how we do our business inside the Beltway. Now, let's see. So a lot of money goes through Washington to these other markets. Could you explain how that works and what the advantage is for political campaigns to, to work you know, with a, a one-stop shop versus a bunch of different uh, sellers? Sure. Look, it, it may surprise some people to learn that over 80% of all political dollars each um, election year are placed from within the DC marketplace. There's eight to nine blue agencies, eight to nine red agencies, and they will place not just issue stuff inside of Washington, DC, but if there's a down ticket election in Sacramento, it's typically placed out of Washington, DC. If there's a governorship in Arizona, it's placed out of Washington, DC, and on and on. The parties can better direct their fundraising efforts through the agencies in DC, and their expertise at those agencies are to be able to affect not just a presidential election, but practically every election there is, all the way through from Senate to House to Governor to down ticket. That's their stock and trade and they're great at it. Uh, and we're there to service that. Now, they've got a lot to do. They've got a lot of states, a lot of elections, a lot of different data that's constantly coming in. And they don't necessarily have the time to make 10, 12, 14, 18 calls every time there's a copy change, a buy up, et cetera. So to be able to collect broadcasters together and act as a single point of contact makes us much more effective in being able to service the agencies, makes them more effective at what they're trying to accomplish. Now, this year, there was a lot of talk that the control of the House of Representatives and perhaps even the Senate uh, is in play. What does it look like in the battleground states? Well, you know, battleground states change depending on, on the year. There were battleground states in 2016 that weren't the same battleground states in 2020. And indeed, here in 2022, those states have shifted too. So everything is up for grabs, let's say. There's 20 senatorial seats open, 20 or 21 gubernatorial seats are open, every house seat is open. So everything's in play. But the states that we see as being the most productive from a revenue perspective this year are Florida, California, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Arizona, Texas, North Carolina, Ohio, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Many of those people would say those are always battleground states. What's interesting is California is practically never a battleground state. There's a gubernatorial race there. There's gonna be a lot of money that plays out in California. Add to that redistricting with the census numbers now being in, and there's a lot more seats open that didn't used to be open. Uh, and there's a lot on the line for both parties to do the best they can this midterm. And another key issue that we're hearing a lot about with this patchwork of political transparency laws, what can you tell us about regulatory compliance and what kind of capabilities you have there? Well, look, we were very, very careful in creating the Scripps Political CTV Consortium to make sure that we were covering all antitrust or anti-competitive issues as it relates to us being able to work together. And we've accomplished that working with our partner, Magnite, who will act as the seat for this um, programmatic and, and direct CTV marketplace. Uh, but we've also been very considerate about how we work with our partners to accomplish this. And we think we've done that in a way that uh, has satisfies any concerns that there may be. Now, political campaigns have a very short window of time to get their messaging out. What can you say about the way this will benefit campaigns? Well, look, we, we, we bring a lot to these agencies. We have quality inventory. We can provide the targeting they require and expect inside of these campaigns. The efficacy to transact with a single point of, uh, of, of entry. Uh, we're providing 
the local news viewer, the local audience in market where they want it. And we've got scale and scale matters. Now for voters that are looking to remain informed about what's going on, how, what, what is the role of local news? How important is that? I think anyone would tell you that a local news viewer in market is already a more engaged and more interested viewer. But when you look at where the campaigns want to spend their money, it's largely in local news. Local news is a vital lifeline within every market. It is kind of a bastion of journalism in that it's there to serve the market. It's there to report on the market. And the people within the market who are watching that broadcast are the ones who want to be informed. And those are the kind of voters that these campaigns want to reach. Now, in your announcement, you mentioned Cox Media Group, Capital Broadcasting Company, Graham Media Group that are participating in this consortium. What's happened since you now made that announcement? Have you seen more people come in? And also, what do you expect to happen in the future? Well, we have. Actually, uh, those are the people who participated in our release. Um, you know, we can add news on to that list right now. We have four other partners that are signed that we haven't announced yet. But just since the release on Tuesday, we've been receiving inbound uh, interest from other CTV companies as well as other broadcasters to the tune of six or eight more additional partners looking to sign up. So I think there's a, a real value here, being able to centralize premium owned and operated uh, inventory directed towards the political marketplace in a single point of entry is what's exciting, not just to the agencies, but also to broadcasters. In the future, I think this is gonna to continue to gain steam. I think we're gonna to continue to add partners. And our goal isn't just to make it through the midterm. Our goal is to keep this going and growing for the next presidential and for the next 20 years after that.